Good boys. Looks like we've got a brand new fur baby. We're adopting a little brother for Sam. Okay, we've decided that it's about time that the space between the shed and the stairs has something a bit better than a pallet and a piece of plywood. So, got some old fence posts, which I'll, I was going to use that one, but it's all dented at the bottom. You know, bolt it to the shed and into the concrete. The other side will be attached to this post. And we're thinking of doing a double swing that'll just swing out this way because the ground's lower on this side. And just going to use a couple of those panels I'm using for the fence. Moon's out, and I've just finished working. Narrowed my two panels, because they were 900 wide, they're now 750 wide each. I'm gonna make this narrower section, the section that goes onto the hinges, wider section the center. We plan on making the gates so that they both open to get a good wide space, because you can't really see it there now. There is a good wide space there to come through. So you can see the panels, one's shorter than the other because I've already shortened it to the size just to fit under the sh under the shed, the eave of the shed. The ground does slope, it raises um, six inches in level between the concrete slab of the shed and the concrete foundation of the post for the stairs where we're going to have that one. So what I'm thinking of doing, we're going to make it the bottom of its slope um, so that there's a fall of six inches and then I'll just make the ground that sort of a slope under it and I'll what I'm thinking of doing because of the way these panels are made is I'll just set them out together mark that fall of six inches over the um, 1500 mil width close to five feet. So roughly a six inch fall over five feet or 150 mil over 1500. Just cut that on a slope with the saw and then reinforce the whole thing with bracing. I'm gonna put some more bracing on this as well so it doesn't flop about as much because they are fairly thin panels. Something I'll hopefully finish off during the week needs to be done. Monday, year 10. New one on the lathe doing a rolling pin. There was a new enroller. He's starting to make one of these tables. Got another student, wanted to make some wooden shoes. He drew the designs on both surfaces, especially like this one. I cut out one side, then put the piece back together, flipped it, Most you know how to do that one bandsaw. He's gonna hog it out in the middle and um, with a force and bit and do some rasp shaping and that sort of stuff. Another one, started making some parts for the coffee table. There's another student who did that as well. Another mallet completed. We've got a Thor mallet starting as well. 
So all doing their own things. There's a jewelry box as well being made and oh here it is. Jewelry box being made. This is the girl in the class and she's doing a lot of this on her own. I didn't even know she glued it up. She just works very diligently, gets an instruction at the start and then just works on it. She did the mitre joints using the using the disc sander. And she's done a great job of gluing it up. Really pleased with that. Probably about two thirds of the class really well engaged and it's um that makes you feel a little bit better. Hundred percent would be awesome, but there's just some that aren't engaging. Anyway, time to go do more paperwork. Early morning Tuesday. Had to get a lift in to work with a workmate today. I asked him yesterday and he said fine. And then he reminded me that um, he had a period zero class today, which meant I had to get up extra early to come in with him. So my timetabling has come back to bite me. <laughs> we, we all have a laugh about it. My theory class is today, so I'm getting everything out of here and into the rooms early. Much easier this way. Really need to get some stools. If I've got a full class set of stools in here, I can run theory in here. I found some, I just gotta buy some. I went and had a look at them because they were very good price. And I just wondered on how strong they were. So I went and had a look at them in the store in Kmart. And they were, they were good. So now I've got to just organize a, a class set order. So they've been doing some hazard reduction burning in the mountains over the last week or so and now they're up a little bit close to our place so it's blue there. Not so blue there. You can hear the helicopters. It says it's all under control. about three k's from the house. Bushfires didn't come very close to us last year, but that also means that all of that stuff out there they're trying to get rid of now was all there, all the undergrowth they hadn't burnt. So hopefully they can keep control of that and minimize the risk of future fires. Open that photo shows how smoky it is out here. The hazard reduction burners, the smoke has just settled and I'm pretty sure what I thought was um, fog in the gully behind us this morning was probably a bit of a settling smoke, I'm not sure. Didn't smell like this this morning though, it's really thick. Hazard reduction burning from last night, yesterday. It was really, it was clear up at the house. Um, in terms of settled smoke. But, as we got, I think about three towns from the base of the mountain. The smoke was really thick, settled there. But it, couldn't see very far ahead. Down here right now, and it looks clear looking straight up, I can see smoke haze ahead. And I guess it's it's gonna settle in the lower pockets and stuff. This area right here is a little bit of a rise. Can smell it inside the car, so I'm wondering what it's gonna be like down at work. You could smell it a little bit the other day. The hazard burning yesterday was pretty thick and it was close to our place. It really looks like they're trying to get to all the areas that didn't get affected by the fires as much last 
last fire season, last year really. Welcome to peak hour. Travelling at 30 k's in a 110 zone. Hands out though. Just had year 12 and found a year 4 that's now mine. I just got them to carry it down the other workshop. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Cut them up into 100 mil. Got interrupted then in the classroom. I was trying to run around, but one of my staff was coming over to ask about some of the other equipment, other, other materials that's in the construction space. He's going to try and make some garden beds out of something or pallets and things. I've been trying to get hold of um, a different timber supplier for my 90 by 35s, my two before material for doing all the stuff with construction and also their form work. And the reason being that the, the old place that I was using, that's probably not all their fault, but I'd asked if they could give me my timber in three metre lengths, because it's just unmanageable otherwise. They, they would send it in six metre lengths, and like I've got nowhere to store stuff that long. My shed's longest length is like just over 4.5. All my timber that I've been ordering from them lately, there's been some really crap quality stuff even with the, the regular radiator pine. And their delivery drivers, I know, are uh, subcontracted. And twice they've just dumped my order out in the front car park or behind the front of the building, or in front of the front buildings. And then the last one, I think, they just dumped in the back car park and left. Like, didn't even get anybody to sign for it they just dumped it and went and so it was all this timber just sitting in the middle of the car park so there's another company that I've used before for senior timber and their quality is pretty good so I emailed them with, with a, asking for a quote and I didn't hear from them so I rang them to make sure my email mailed it through and they said I'll go and check that if it's not there I'll give you a call back if it is there we'll get onto it it's been almost a week and I don't want that sort of stuff holding up my class because they're already behind so with that melamine there was so much of it and no real use for it so I just got the kids to carry it down to the workshop I ran it through the saw at 100 mil wide four inch and they can use that for the formwork task which doesn't need to have a concrete pour in it it's just formwork and and it needs to have a step and also this stuff's perfect for it so we'll be able to do that soon and in the meantime I can get some other stuff for my actual form work for their tar and their cluster details doing quite a bit of back burning yesterday or hazard reduction burning it is because it's not against a fire and that bit of smoke we drove through the, is the thickest it's been up this way up this high up the mountains aside from the other night when they were first doing it <coughs> there's a lot that seems to be settled in the gullies and down that Sydney base and so we'll see what it's like down near work Been busy this morning. Came out to finish up the gates or get them to a finished point. Here's the gates. The angled cut on the bottom. So I just marked six inches up on on this side when I had them set out. Marked the line across and I just used my track saw just to cut straight across there. Then attached cut and attach these extra pieces across the bottom put a couple of these on it it's not really that strong like if I you can see there's a fair bit of movement there it's not like a security gate or just like a privacy gate I just hammered some steel pipe into here for these to be going to I think it's pretty good so there it is from the front it doesn't come up too far past there 
just below the shed. It's a nice little divider.